What is up, guys? This is the Sound Alchemist adjusting himself in his chair here with Gersh One. And we're back at it to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater. Yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you. Just comment down below, put a question in front of your question, because it's easier for us to filter through all that stuff, and we answer it first. Um, and that is what my boy Cage Schultz did. He asks, could Lehman Russ have left because... Could Lehman Russ have left because he was feeling the curse of the wolf in himself and went to find a cure for himself and the others? No, probably not. Um, the reason for that is the whole scenario, or the day that he left was the day of the feast. What was it called? Like the grand feast or something like that. That's not what it's called. Well, so basically, <laughs> they were just, they were everybody was just like having a good time eating. And then he gets up, he's like, hey, I'm leaving. Um... I need to, I, some of my guys need to come with me because uh, we're about to mess stuff up and then he leaves. Um, and the wolf in curse comes whenever you're, whenever a, a space wolf is like in the heat of battle and there's just like fire um, raging in his heart and then he turns into a wolf. That's how they become the wolf in ring. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that ruined everything. <laughs> it's like, uh, if you guys seen, uh, what is it, Teen Wolf? That, that's how it is. Have you seen Twilight? That's how it is. I haven't seen either of those two. Have you seen I have that? seen Van, Van Helsing. Van Helsing. That was a cool movie. I think the werewolf from Van Helsing is probably the best werewolf I've ever seen. Have you seen Underworld? Yes, and I hate those wolves. Because they're puppets. Then they look like puppets. I, I've never seen any of them. You've never seen Underworld? Mm -hmm. Not even the first None. one? None. It comes out... It, they just play that on TNT every <laughs> single day. Like, I don't even think they, they have regular stuff. They, they just, just play, play Underworld. Underworld. Um, what were we talking about? Wolf and, or no, Lehman Ross. Oh yeah, no, he, I don't think he's succumbed to the, I think he's out hunting for Dark Eldar. I, I, I heard there was rumors, um, take this with grains of salt, South Bay. Um, but there's rumors saying that, uh, Lehman Russ will be the next guy out, um, and perhaps he will be a wolf in. Now, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, don't quote me on it, but. Yeah, what are your sources? What was it? Is it, is it? What's his name? That one uh, YouTuber who's badass with the with the news. Kyrioth. Kyrioth. Is it from him? No. Oh, because if it was from him, then it's legit. He's pretty legit. <clears throat> Next question. Uh, this one is by Grimlets. What does the sound alchemist's name truly mean? Does he do alchemy with sounds, as in turning lead vocals into gold vocals? Or is he just a good alchemist? As in, oh, he's a sound alchemist. That one. Oh, this I has like bothered one. me for years. Hashtag Cypher Lives Matter. Hashtag Blame Lorgar. Um, so the name Sound Alchemist, um, you could look at it on face value and say, oh, he's a safe and sound alchemist. Or you can say, oh, he's the ding sound alchemist. But behind all truths, there is another truth behind that. So you gotta dig deeper, go through all the alchemy books, and eventually you'll have to decipher what the truth behind the truth of what the sound alchemist really means. Pretty much you gotta butcher like 10,000 humans to make a philosopher's stone, and then you'll find out what the sound alchemist means. In reality, there is no meaning. You just gave them the meaning, now they're not gonna sacrifice all That's my truth. It's time oh. for you guys to decipher the truth behind my truth. He's secretly a chaos god in the war, we both are entities in the war. We're just trying to get you guys to worship us. And by you um, going through the sacrifices and the, and the rituals, you will empower the sound alchemist. That's his trick, ain't it? That's a safe and sound definition you got there. He gave you a hint. That's not a hint. Oh, okay. <laughs> Next question comes from Drew Stramick. Stramick? Are there any other notable members of the Adeptus Mechanicus other than Belisarius Call, the Fabricator General, the main one that betrayed the Emperor and sided with Horus? Horus. Um, there is also. Um, Isn't Miguel Angel San Luis the Third? Yeah. yeah, that's that's one. That's another one. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there is a lot. Uh, mostly 30k though. Mm-hmm. This one's by Victor Rosenhart. I have a question, me, 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 I have a question. But I doubt you'll know the answer. 
Do any of you guys know if there will be any new stuff coming for Slanesh in 40k? Oh, yes. There's got to be. Because, I mean, we've had uh, the corn, what's it called? Bloodkin? Mm-hmm. Um, Demonkin. Corn Demonkin. And then we had all that Nurgle stuff that came out, both for Age of Sigmar and 40k. And then we got the Zeech book. Um, so, the last thing is Slanesh. Right, and one of the game designers from GW was on a, a stream, and he said that Slanesh uh, demons are coming. Oh, nice. Yeah. But he didn't say when. It's speculated that it's sometime this year. But yes, they are coming. And if, if and so the thing is, like, if they're gonna come, they're gonna come for Age of Sigmar, and they're gonna come for Warhammer 40k because they they're gonna do the same thing that they did with Nurgle. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be coming out soon because like rumor has it, like they try to like coincide, like you said, with uh, Age of Sigmar. Yeah. And they just got the Morathi. Like, oh yeah. The elves and they look kind of slanashy. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Full grown. Next question. Uh, this one is by <clears throat> Foo Foo Foo. Kind of dumb, but if Lucius the Eternal was killed by a demon or a warp entity, what would happen? Also, what would happen if a crew ate Lucius the Eternal? He would turn into um, Lucius the Eternal and lose his crudiness. Damn, my crudy pebbles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if then, a demon kills him? Yeah. I think they'll... He'll become a demon, Lucius. I don't know, it's, it's not very, like... I wish there was, like, a rule book as to what happens if we kill. We should make a video. We should make a video of, like, all the different scenarios um, that would that would pertain to that. And then... Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be pretty interesting. Uh, another good video idea is coming from this question from Brian Watkins. What are all the Primarch's genetic flaws? I'm gonna create a 40 facts video on that. I'm gonna break it down for each individual, or I'm gonna give you guys each individual Primarch's flaw. Um, the only person that does not have a flaw Gilliman, is Gilliman, isn't it? Gilliman, because he's fabulous. <laughs> That's his flaw. He's too fab. Yeah, he's too fab. But wouldn't that be Fulgrim? He's too fab. Yeah, but, had, but Fulgrim was like, his flaw is like, he was, uh, he was full of himself. Yeah, because they're all about achieving perfection. Yeah, so that was his flaw. Is that a genetic flaw, though? That's just a character flaw, isn't it? Well, technically... He got his character from the Emperor. Well, he got his character, scene. yeah, from his biology in his mind. In his stomach mind. In his stomach <laughs> mind. And that's influenced by the genetic uh, material of the gene seed. Mm -hmm. So it would be a genetic flaw if he was fabulous. So real quick, do a rundown. You got the uh, Canis Helix. For the Space Wolves. Mm -hmm. You got the Black Rage and the Red Thirst for the Blood Angels. Um, you got like the red, red eyes and like the pitch black skin for the Salamanders. Um, what else? Uh, Corvus Corax, his pale skin. Oh, and wasn't he able to like freaking blend with the hood? Yeah, he was able to like camouflage. Well, was that a technique or was that um, a, a genetic mutation? No, because I don't think any of his Space Marines could, could do, do it, right? Just him. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, that's not a flaw, that's fucking badass. Well, a lot of them are badass. <laughs> a lot of the flaws aren't, like, really flaws. The only ones that are flaws are the ones that are uh, that impair you. Um, but you can always make your wolfing. flaws into, like, a... I mean, Wolfen's not even a flaw, you're, like, freaking beastie. But I, I think you, you turn into a beast. Right, that's beastie. <laughs> <laughs> but you lose your, like, your... Your, your thought, your, yeah, your, your uh, processes, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and was Lehman Russ, did he have that? His, his space marines did, and they came from his gene seed. Oh. So that I guess that's where like the rumors are saying that maybe he's turned into a war. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll create a 40 facts video and go down each individual one. That's all I can remember. Next question. Next question. How many, or Gulisa, how many Imperial Guard troops would it take to bring down a normal space marine? How many would the space marine kill before he died? Seven. Nah, seven humans can take down a space man. Oh, yeah. Nah. Chuck Norris. Okay, that depends which humans. The Rock. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. Ron Jeremy. Is he dead? Is he dead? I don't th think so. Well, okay, so Ron Jeremy, we'll throw him in there. S Stephen Hawking, rest in peace. Um, actually, you just need five. I don't want to name any more. <laughs> Stephen Hawking is, is enough. Yeah. Next question. 
Next one comes from Michael Howell. Since weapons can be... Uh, I think we've answered this before. Yeah, we have. Well, uh, okay. Since some weapons can be imbued with chaos demons to make it... Uh, to make them more powerful. Is it possible to bind an imperial saint or angel in a weapon? Ooh, I don't think we've gotten that one. I thought we did. I thought we, we, talked we, about got, we got about, like, is it possible to, because you could put a demon inside a weapon and exercise it to take it out, but can you put a saint in a weapon? I would say no, just because that's not how they work. Yeah, I mean, they can be blessed. Like, uh, Saint Celestine's armor was blessed. Um, her sword was blessed and all that stuff. Hence, she's a saint. Yep. But I don't think you could actually... Put, for example, Saint Celestine into a weapon. Yeah, that's like some Metabot stuff. It's not. It's not. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Was Metabots? It? No, Metabots like fuse with other Metabots. I think you're thinking of Sakura Sakura card captures. Is that what it's called? I think so. Card captor Sakura. Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Um. Oh, this one's interesting. The Elder One asks, If an Ogren is crossed with a human, and a large, smart hybrid is born, will this hybrid be able to become an Astarte? Because who doesn't like a badass that's 11 feet tall, and also a space marine? Yeah. Uh, so the cool thing about the gene seed of a, of a space marine is that it will alter the body of its um, person to fit um, like the body of a, the supreme body of a... Of a so basically, you're changing yourself. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so if you have a half auger and half human, you implant him with the gene seed of, of a, a space marine, he becomes a space marine. Um, he doesn't become a auger and space marine. He's just a space marine because the gene seed turned him into that. A space marine. That's a cool concept. Yeah. He'd be like ostracized because he's so different. Hodor. Yeah, there you go. Last question. This question comes by Michael Howell. So it's established that if somebody strikes down Lucius the Eternal, brace yourselves guys, they will become him. But what would happen if he's killed unknowingly or he's caught in the crossfire or orbital bombardment or if someone actually drops a piano on this man? Word will get out and the person who did that would be like, wait, did I kill him? And then boom, he feels pride because he might have and then he becomes that, right? Something like that. It's all about feeling prideful in your besting of Lucius. Most of the time this won't happen because of plot armor or some other shenanigans. Just so they don't convolute the lore. But yeah. We, we really need to create a video for that. <laughs> but thank you so much for sending all those questions our way. If you guys have more questions, comment down below. Yeah, don't forget to put questions in front of your questions because we got those questions first. There was a lot of questions that didn't have questions in this one. So be sure to do that, guys. And as always, I'm the Sound Alchemist. Gershwan, <laughs> we're out of here.